welcome. I'm Maureen Wilkie with The Connected Advisor, and we're excited about today's WealthManagement.com Fast Chat with Kirk Hewlett, Executive Vice President of Business Coaching and Consulting with The Advisor Group. Kirk specializes in many areas, and today we're going to focus on centers of influence. COIs are more important today than ever before, especially in our virtual world. And what we're going to do today is just highlight a few ways that you can align COIs to help you with growing your practice. And then we'll invite you to our upcoming webinar on March 25th. So we'll go ahead and get started. And thank you for joining us today, Kirk. First of all, who should financial advisors be inviting into their COI group? I hear this all the time, and I think some guidance here would be great. Well, first, invite in any professional who works with the same type of ideal client or within the same target market that the financial professional does. Now, this could be very traditional COI referrals, such as CPAs, attorneys, PNC agents, or perhaps non-traditional COIs like luxury travel agents or divorce counselors or real estate management companies who focus on second homes or golf pros. And second, I would say a COI who already works with some of your top segment clients is an excellent COI to have in your circle. Those are a couple of really good ideas and it helps them to be very focused. One of the challenges is prior to this virtual world we're in right now, you could have, invite someone for coffee or lunch. It's harder to do that. Do you have some suggestions on how to invite a COI? In a virtual Certainly world, a little more challenging in the virtual world where a year ago I, or more, I would have been suggesting take them to lunch, get to know them, do an interview, um, talk about partnership opportunities. So now probably best in a virtual world is is ask that top segment client who already works with that COI to make that introduction for you. So it's a much as warm of an introduction as you can get uh, in our virtual world. Um, and then really what's important, I think, don't worry about the platform. It's probably going to be better to do it where you can see the other person versus being on the phone. But go into it really trying to learn as much about that COI, their business, what their goals are for the business, what type of clients they like to work with, what are their specialties. And then also go in seeking ways that you can immediately provide value to that COI, whether that could be just some advice, whether that could be pointing them to a resource, or maybe it's an introduction to someone in your network. Those are great ideas. And I do like the idea of using a Zoom or Skype or whatever you want to get to meet that person face to face. And you can always invite them and say, would you mind if we do a live call? Like, don't surprise them. I always tell everyone, don't surprise yes. them. But um, it's also then how many COIs really like what would you suggest for how many COIs a practice should have? What works? We recommend trying to get to a small group, three or four strong COI partners. And, and these are relationships once you get your three or four that you're going to really actively manage. So you'd, you'd rather have three high quality COIs than six loose relationships. And I would say this is a long-term strategy for your business. So take time, take 12 months to 18 months to really methodically source and assess and establish those three or four strong partnerships. Expect to kiss a lot of frogs. That is, um, that's a really good strategy. And I like also thinking this is a long-term strategy for a practice. It's not short-term. And it's important that that COI also feels like there's some reciprocity and it's a win-win for them too. Can you think of one or two ways you've seen that work or a few ideas around that? Because I think advisors aren't quite sure what to do there. And I think some insight would be really helpful. I say set reciprocity aside for quite a ways into the relationship and just think of all the ways you can add value first add value continuously, add it strategically, demonstrate your value, especially if you have joint clients. Talk about the work you've done for those clients and how it ties to what the COI does. Ask for joint work opportunities with those shared clients. Then maybe evolve onto 
prospecting some, doing some joint prospecting, maybe online events or when we return to live events, do all those things to add value. Have that COI come in and do the planning process with you so they experience it firsthand. Then at that point, you can start asking for suggesting and encouraging referrals. So it, it's okay if that relationship's a bit lopsided to what you're doing to add value, uh, especially as you're trying to just get to three or four great referral referrers who are going to refer other top segment clients to you. Yeah, that's a great approach and a great timeline. And it often we want to do things quickly, but this is really important for a practice. And I'm really looking forward to the upcoming webinar. It's on March 25th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And I know you'll be leading it. And it's going to be around the secret insights of a successful COI strategy. So thank you everyone for joining us for today's Fast Chat. Thank you, Kirk, for joining us. And we look forward to the upcoming webinar March 25th.